Hello and welcome to MIP TV. And with me, as always, is Bob Cook from Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy, who likes to review books, talk about the literature that he's read. He's read an awful lot. And we're looking at a book now that's been really popular, especially with students, and it's called A Curious Calling. That's the, the kind of shortened title of the book by Michael B. Sassman. And um, it, I'm going to guess, Bob, because I've not read this, but I'm going to guess. Oh. It kind of investigates the motivations of why people become counsellors and psychotherapists. That's right, Roy. It's, the eight, it's our 82nd book. Wow. So I thought I'd, <laughs> I thought I'd uh, review a real corker. It's been around for some time. And I've been, I've been training psychotherapists since 1993. And uh, every time, um, you know, a year comes around for the next intake and I start interviewing uh, prospective people who want to be uh, psychotherapists and more, more people ever now in 2019. I nearly always ask the question somewhere, why do you want to do this job? Why do you want to sit beside or next to a person for one hour listening to their woes, dreads about life? So, yes, you are right. This book is about the motivations, the unconscious motivations of why psychotherapists are drawn to our profession. Mm. And, it's, uh, and hard books, a lot of the books about research, because um, they ask a lot of therapists the same questions. Um, the, and a lot of the book is about motivations, unconscious motivations particularly. And it's a really interesting question. Uh, why would anybody on earth want to sit and listen to somebody um, usually reiterating their dreads, worries, and anxieties about life. Why would you enter a profession like that? Well, it's, it's, it's such an interesting question, isn't it, Bob? And, and I wonder what kind of answers that the, your, your prospective students give you. What, what kind of responses do you get? And is there any commonality in those? Well, yes. And there's one common answer which is very 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 common in fact i would say 80 percent of the people that's eight out of ten that i'll probably interview will say will give this answer and actually in the book uh they spend a lot of time uh talking about this answer and the answer i think is at least eight out of ten when we really see they want to say i want to help people yes now that's a really interesting response not only is a common response, it's interesting because it tells us very little. Mm. It's uniquely, you know, the gratifications of each person is uniquely different. Yes. So they might want to help people for uh, their own guilt. They might want to help people for redemption. They might want to help people because um, they think there's lots of money in it. They might want to help people to structure time. They want to, might want to help people to unconsciously enact their history. I mean, they might want to help people to get lots of strokes because they feel depressed and lonely themselves. There's, there's many different reasons, consciously and unconsciously, to that question. There is. And it's really interesting. When I, when I first started my counselling training, our tutor um, asked us to be really honest why we wanted to become counsellors. Oh. And it was interesting. There was a whole lot of different responses Oh. in the room and she asked the question her words not mine bob how many people here are catholics no yes what, no, oh i see i see where she's coming from yeah. yes and 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 she she can she conflated if you like the idea that that maybe some people with uh, very strong religious connections felt uh, inherently guilty and therefore they needed to um, expunge their guilt-ridden selves by yes. helping others. Now, now that's talked about in this book, actually, not from the Catholic position, but the sense of, uh, actually, it, it, I forget, it's, they do talk about religion, but they also talk about moral duty. Yes. In the same vague, you know, same process. And I think from the religious context as well, that is a moral, some people will come from a moral duty sense. Mm. And often, actually, from the, from the way she's talking, they do talk about guilt being, you know, uh, often an unconscious motivating factor. Um, another big one they talk about is redemption. 
Yeah. Who actually, and so I see where the Catholic becomes. It's a good question. It's a good. It's a sorry. It's a good statement. Yeah. 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 So yeah. what did you put? Do you remember all those years ago? Why? How you answered that when she said that? Yeah. Yes, I did. And I, 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 I I'm going to tell you. I wrote ego. <laughs> I wrote. I, I wrote ego. Yeah, ego. Yeah. ego. Because ego. that was it. I, want, I wanted to be better than I was. I wanted to have some form of authority in the world that at that time I felt I didn't have. Ooh. And um, so I was really honest about it. I think my motivations are different now, 16 years on. I'm a oh, different right. person. Oh, and, oh, yeah. you know, and, uh, but, I, yeah, I was honest. And, and, uh, and it was interesting. A lot of the people in my group were aghast when I said that. Really? Because, yeah, some people were aghast, you know, kind of vocalised, well, what a thing to say. And I said, well, you asked me to give you an honest answer, and, you know, I'm here to be honest, and that's why. Um, and that, you know, that developed really into an interest in psychology and also an interest in, in helping people. Um, yeah, yeah. that's a very good answer. And I remember, oh, God. Um, what I said, and I, it's very similar to what a lot of these, um, well, many responses, but what these uh, students answer, or prospective students, and I'd been in therapy for about a year and a half, and I was also on a counselling course when I was asked that question, actually, mm. you know, why would I want to go into this curious profession? And I answered, oh, because I want to be like my therapist and help people. Ah, uh, Yes. Now that's an interesting one. If you think about it, my early therapy is very, very much the mother I never had. Yes. So, looking at all this, and I didn't explore it that much. I don't think we had the discussions you had. What did I go into this profession to simply please the the desired mother I never had? For example, I, I can't. I'm not. I'm just reflecting on that now. So, yeah. thirty-four years later, I would probably say, yeah. yeah Besides a myriad of other things, I would probably say yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really interesting. There's lot, but there's lots of people on motivations. I had the I had the privilege of training lots of people in the recovery community oh. who have had who had um, you know difficulties with substance misuse of various sorts, and they they came to it as as a, as a redemptive position, a giving yes. back position. Yeah. Um, I've I, I've got colleagues who'd lost children, who'd had therapy and wanted to give back that way, mm. um, and I, I have I have met both. Well, I've I met. I'll, I'll leave it to that. Some people who I did wonder if they should have been therapists, because mm. their motivations didn't seem very clear, and there was a lot of diffusion around it, which made me wonder: a) did they not know, or b) did they know exactly? why they wanted to become yeah. therapists yeah. and weren't really comfortable stating it. Either way, I think, I think there's some difficulty there. You know, right. you know say what you, you know, as John Schleen said, you know, the, the student of Rogers, you know, you know, say what, you know, say what, call it what it, say what you do, but call it what it is. And um, I, I think that's always been my mantra, you know. No, you're right. And I think it's very interesting, as you, you picked on for a second here, uh, in this book, they talk a lot about Freud. And Freud's early answering to that question, interestingly enough, uh, is when he talks about relatingness. In other words, he, one of his thoughts about unconscious motivation was that people often come into this profession because they have a deficit in relating to people. Mm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And when you think of us now in 2019, with the huge emphasis on relationship being the cure uh, yeah. for people, and if you put that in the context of what I've just said, that people's unconscious motivation might be to actually um, fulfill a deficit in relating to people, uh, it's an interesting uh, thought process where we're going to. It is. What, what, so what else does the book tell us, Bob? What are the gems may we find in this book regarding uh, people? Yeah, well, it talks a lot about exploitation. And in other words, why, I ask the question, why, why am I writing this? Why, what does it matter, really, what, you know, if the answers come up to why we 
you know, sit between sit next to a person or opposite a person for an hour and listen to their wo woes. And their answer, or his answer anyway, is that unless we reflect on our unconscious motivations, we could be exploiting the very people who are vulnerable. In other words, you know, if we don't examine our unconscious motivations, we may act out in ways which is exploited, exploited and harmful to the very people that come in the room. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yes, it wasn't for this, if it wasn't for the fact this is going on YouTube, Bob, I, I, could, share some, <laughs> I, I could share some really interesting uh, kind of stories over a cup of tea about, about some of the people I've met, about their motivations and the fact that really they should have had a lot more therapy before yeah. they signed on to train. I'll look there. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. And the book goes on to talk about the pivotal importance of therapy. Yes. Pivotal. Pivotal. And uh, they don't say, well, uh, they don't give a time how long a person should be in therapy. But I bet you it's more than the BACP's recommended dosage, which is nil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. In other words, unless you really reflect on your unconscious motivations while you're doing the job, yeah. you will probably enact out the deficits or the fragility of your own human nature at the cost of the vulnerable people who come to see you, is their yeah. position. And mine, by the way. Yes, I, 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 I think, for me, I think that everybody needs some form of a moral compass. Yes. Now, for some people, that's a faith position, a spiritual position, can be an intellectual position. I have to say that's where I come from, Bob. I mm. tend to have a very strong intellectual moral compass. Mm. Anybody who knows me well will say that I spend my time quoting philosophers, theorists, chapter and verse as a mm. way of kind of navigating my way through life. And I find that extremely useful because that's the kind of person I am. But you are right. You need some form of, you need some form of compass to, mm. you know, to, to find your way through and not to take them into the difficult waters. I'm wondering, did, did this book mention Chiron or Chiron, the wounded healer by any chance, and the no, you, archetypes? You, you, add this to, you add this to the book. Go on, tell me, tell me what you're alluding to. Well, I'm alluding, I'm alluding to the, the many wonderful characters in Greek mythology. And one of them, of course, was Chiron, spelt strangely enough with a K, I think. And he was, he was, a, he was, a, he was a, a minotaur, I think. Half horse, half human, and he, um, yeah, he, he went doing a lot of hunting. Uh, the, the, the Greek gods did a lot of hunting with bows and arrows and stuff. And he was wounded by an arrow dipped in the uh, blood of the Hydra, I think, which is a snake-headed woman. I think I'm right. Yeah. And um, and because it because the he couldn't cure himself, he, he immortally sold. He, he was in, in immortal pain. And he oh. spends his time trying to find a cure. And as such, yeah. he, um, he, he spent his time curing others um, as a way of curing himself. And that's where the yeah. term, the wounded healer, comes ah. from. Well, I didn't know that, but the book spends at least three chapters at the end. From their position is the people, I say there's an answer to this question. But what do they do say most categorically is what you've just said very eloquently in their position. They think a huge, huge majority of people unconsciously come into therapy to heal themselves. Yeah. Yeah. That's really their position they get to. Yeah. Yeah. And I think more eloquently than them, but, but they go on to back it up with research. Yeah. And I, I, I would agree with that. I'm someone who's taught for a lot of years and have been a therapist myself and met a lot of therapists. I think that a lot of therapists, not all, but a lot, would say that, that in, in the search of, the, of exercising their own demons, it's helpful to work with other people. And I think that's fine, as long as they know what their own demons are. Yeah, that's absolutely, that's a wonderful, that's what they say in this book, in many roundabout ways, is that you need in-depth, what you put moral compass therapy, to reflect and to really have some understanding of those flaws, those human vulnerabilities, those deficits, the enactments that you might be carrying in the relationship with your clients. Because if you haven't had the therapy, you could, and would, I, I think you, they're true, that you could unconsciously exploit the very people who come to you for help. 
Yes, and I, th I think it's really interesting. If you, if you look at the um, name and shame section in the BACP magazine, and they, they, I, I, which I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of state my position here. I think it's slightly unfair. Uh, oh, yeah. But they, 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 name in, they, they would say that it's sanctions. That's, that would be the BACP's positions. Yeah. And they, 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 some, of, some of the background to where a complaint's been upheld can, is quite interesting. And yeah. you, you, could actually, you could actually see in some cases where maybe somebody would need to do a bit more work on themselves. Oh, definitely. Because, because there's a deficit and there's projection, projective identification or transference. Yeah, very uh, much so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very much so. So I think it's a wonderful book for seasoned professionals like us to reflect on. And I think an essential read for people who are, of course, entering the professions to hopefully stir them to reflect on how come they've been coming to this curious uh, profession and uh it's a good read it is and, and uh, you know it's called the book's called a curious calling that's a short headline for it michael b sussman we'll put a link down below uh, so people can inspect the book and you know a bit of a plea um really i think for bob and myself is if you are thinking of training as a therapist be honest about your motivations because the thing in therapy there is no escape from yourself it will no. come out eventually you, you couldn't have said that's a wonderful way to end this review yeah 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 who you are will will materialize at some point you cannot hide from yourself and uh, and you know your own personal therapy is a way of meeting yourself and understanding who you are in the world which is why you know we we ask people to do their own personal therapy yeah and you may and I, I, just one other thing on this and of course, as you start to do your own therapy, you might leave the job. Yes. Um, yes, I've had a few people do that, yeah. yeah. Because actually, you realise you come in for uh, reasons which means that you're enacting your own history and carrying on your script, and there we are. So people leave, and thank God they do, by the way. Yeah, yeah, and those, and those people are brave enough to make that decision, and I've had students who've done that. You know, hats off to them, because you know, they're, 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 they're going in a different direction, and that part of that may be to heal themselves or, yeah. or, or to get a better handle on who they are. So as always, Bob Cook, thank you very much. So those of you watching out there in YouTube land, downstairs for the links to the book. And uh, as usual, Bob doesn't get paid for book reviews. It's not a, it's not a, um, a sponsored um, segment. Bob does it for the love of literature. And uh, we'll see you in the next book review. So thank you very much. Thank you.